Today's video presentation is about needs analysis. It is a trend in the English for Specific Purposes or ESP teaching approach. This Chapter 5 lesson will be presented by our group consisting of Ms. Danica Varkes, Ms. Ayesa Martinez, Ms. Dara Louise Lozaga, Mr. Martin N. Solapas, and myself, Ms. Marie Russell Martin. So, for our learning objective, at the end of the lesson, the pre-service teacher should be able to um, explain needs analysis as a concept in ESP. Next is differentiate the general English and English for specific purposes. Next, we have um, to discuss different target need analysis categories like necessities, locks, and wants. And next, we also have to recognize the value of needs analysis in ESP concept and their future career as educator. And last one is to demonstrate knowledge and in gathering information about the target needs and learning needs analyzation. So the first thing that we will be discussing is the difference between the concept of general English to English for a specific purpose. So in general English, the needs of the learners are not specifically met for students' difficulties. Thus, it just caters the needs of the majority, not focusing on a specific strategy for a specific scope of learners. So, on the other hand, English for a specific purpose particularly caters the needs of each learner in a much effective language retention through distinct strategy among a specific scope of learners. So therefore, ESP requires need analysis. So what is a need analysis? Need analysis is the awareness of a target situation. So in this way, we can be able to distinguish easily who are the products of the general English and who are the product of the English for a specific purpose approach. So what do we mean by target need analysis? As we specify the needs of learners in language learning, we should also be able to discover what the learners need to do in a target situation. For example, how a student can use English in a foreign country or how a student speaks in front of a formal speech. As we look further, in this approach, we will be digging deeper to the terms of necessities, lacks, and wants. As mentioned, under the target need analysis are three different terms. There is necessities, lacks, and wants. Let's first talk about necessities. It says here that necessities is what the learners have to know to function effectively in the target situation. It is the need of someone to be successful in his or her business. In All Right 1982 and quoted in West in 1994, they defined necessities as the skills that a student sees as being relevant to himself or herself. Let's say, for example, you will be migrating to an English-speaking country. So it is a necessity for you to learn the English language since it will be the medium of communication there in that specific location. So that's one example of necessities as part of target need analysis. Then we also have lacks. It is defined as the difference between the student's present competence and the desired competence. That's based from All Right 1982 and quoted as well in West in 1994. One more definition based on Hutchinson, Waters, and Breen in 1979 is lacks are what the learner knows already so that the teacher can decide which of the necessities the learners lack. So the first one is something the learner needs. The second lacks is something the learner has to know in order for him or her to enhance his or her skills. For example, there's such thing as English proficiency exams wherein you will achieve a specific rank to determine if your communication skills in English is basic, advanced, or intermediate. Um, basic, they defined it as conversational. 
um, interme intermediate is um, more uh, complex. You have uh, complex conversational skills in English, such as expounding your thought, um, explaining something. So those are, uh, falls under that category um, advanced. That's already the highest um, rank in terms of being proficient in the English language. It includes being able to communicate academically, um, being able to use the language in business, in more complicated um, transactional or conversational matter. So, given that example, if we will be talking about LACs, let's say, for example, you're just under the basic rank in terms of speaking English, then you will work with an American firm. So you need to increase that basic level of English proficiency to an intermediate level. So that is an example of uh, lacks under target needs analysis. Then we also have wants. This is the needs on which students put a higher priority in the available limited time. That's also based from All Right 1982. That's quoted in West in 1994. Furthermore, it is the subjective needs of learners. When we say wants, it is not a requirement. It is brought out of a student's interest. Um, for example, those individuals who are fan of the Korean pop culture or Korean dramas. So this is not English re uh, related, but still related to language. Um, part of their free time or hobby is to watch Korean dramas, explore Korean culture. So they have this desire to learn the Korean language. So that is an example of um, a want in terms of um, target need analysis in language learning. Same goes with those who are fan of uh, European and American series. We aim to understand that uh, movie or that TV show without reading the subtitles and be able to understand it well despite the English being our second language and not our mother tongue. So that desire brings the uh, interest and the motivation to learn English. So we have necessities which is the need of the learner in a specific situation. We have lacks, which is the comparison of present competence versus the desired competence. If the learner wants to advance his or her um, English speaking skills or language skills. We also have wants. Those are the needs of the learners brought out of their interest or curiosity in a specific language or particularly the English language. Gathering information about target needs. Asking questions about the target situation and attitude towards that situation of the various participants in the learning process. So, in gathering information, it describes the process of acquiring knowledge. It is the process of collecting information about events or process in a carefully and orderly way. Also, in gathering information is the most important of the critical thinking process. Getting all of the information you need to make a decision will always lead to the best outcome. So now, we have here ways to gathering information about needs. The first one is questionnaires. So in questionnaire, it is the information gathering techniques that allow system analysts to study attitudes, beliefs, behavior, and characteristics of several people who may be affected by the current and proposed system. So the next one is the interview. Conducting an interview can provide information that you are not likely to find elsewhere. One is observation and data collection the example is gathering text target profile of language skills and the last one is ongoing the example is regular class discussion 
One way of gathering information about the target need is to follow a simple framework. It outlines the kind of information that the course designer needs in order for him or her to proceed with the analysis of the learner's target needs. Here's a target situation analysis framework. First in the outline is why is the language needed? Is it for studying, for your work, for a specific training, or for a combination of those three items? Because in work, we also do uh, study new concepts, we attend trainings. If those are in English medium, so we would also need to learn English. Also, if it is for some other purposes like status, examination, or, or promotion. As I've mentioned earlier, there are uh, language proficiency exams. So those fall under the first outline, which is why the language is needed. Second is how will the language be used? We are talking about the medium, if it is about speaking, writing, or reading, as well as the channel, if the message will go through phone conversation, video conference, or face-to-face -face conversation, and the type of the text or the discourse. For example, if it's for school, academic texts, for lectures, informal conversations, technical manuals, catalogs, as well as your day-to-day -day conversation. What will the areas be? So we are talking about the subject or the level of the understanding of the person that we talk to. For example, if language will be used in the field of medicine, biology, architecture, shipping, commerce, engineering, or for business. Also, we need to consider if we are talking to a technician, to craftsman, to postgraduate, or if we are in a secondary school setting. Um, there are different uh, types of English that they are using. If we are not familiar with those, they tend to become jargons or unfamiliar terms to us. So for our next situation analysis framework question, we have who will the learner use the language with? To whom should the learner use the language with? So the learner can use the language with those people who are uh, native speakers of that specific language or some non-native speakers yet they are a uh, they are able to understand that language the learners can also use the language with uh, these people this type of people that uh, they, the learner should consider the level of knowledge of the receiver of that l specific language like for example some expert um, layman and student the learner can also share that language with through uh, through relationships like for example um, uh, share the language or using that specific language to communicate with their colleague teachers um, customer superior or to their subordinate so for our next target situation analysis framework we have here where will the language be used or where can the language be used no so we can use it to physical settings um human context and linguistic context let's go with physical settings first so physical setting is where the language is used no we can use that language in our office or we're in lecture theater we're in hotel in a workshop or in library so when we say uh, human context naman we hear by um, using the language alone or we're in the meetings we have um, demonstration or you are on the phone we have linguistic context so in linguistic context this is where uh, uh this is refers no to the environment in which the language is used like for example in your own country or in abroad that is where the or where will the language can be used so for our last target situation analysis framework question we have here when will the language be used so when 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 does it take place now so uh, we can use the language when we are concurrently um, with the ASP course or subsequent uh, subsequently 
uh, using the language we can use the language it's either frequently seldom in a small amount of people or in large chunks wherein you are using that language to communicate with those people so need analysis is clear on its goal to cater each learner's point of view including our unexpected changes or our tiny weaknesses it can be interpreted in need analysis so therefore ESP or English for specific purpose concerns with people's behavior in every situation and every specific situation and aim. And need analysis caters each learner's point of view that may vary according to their background, preference, and interest. Aside from target needs analysis, which looks at the specific need of a learner, to learn the English language, we also have learning needs analysis. So learning need is what the students need in order for them to learn. Using our analogy of the ESP course as a journey, what we have done so far is to consider the starting point or the lack. We also looked for the destination or the necessities and where the destination should be or the wants. So those uh, three target needs analysis is the learner's specific purpose. But moreover, ESP process is not only concerned with knowing or doing, but with learning as well. So now that we already know why we need to learn English, how would we make sure that we will be able to learn effectively or efficiently as a as a teacher, we need to also consider the interest or the capabilities of our students of how they can acquire language. We need to take into account the destination or needs of a learning situation. The task or the course that we should design for the learners should be enjoyable. It should be fulfilling. It should also be manageable and generative. When we say generative, it should be able to enhance their skills and produce um, results effectively. We also need to consider the route or the path that the learner should take in order for them to learn English for their specific purpose. We need to consider the conditions of their learning situation. We need to be able to assess the learner's existing knowledge, their skills and their strategies in learning, as well as their learning motivation. Students may need to read long, dull, complex texts, but their motivations may be high because they like the subject in general. The next one is examination or looming. And the third one is job or promotion prospects may be going on to do very interesting experiments or practical work based on the text. They may be like or respect the subject, teacher, or boss. So also, students do not see the learning as a subject separately from the learning of the language of the subject. Learning the context of a subject means learning the language of that subject. Earlier in the target needs analysis, we used an outline or a framework that provides the information the course designer can use. We can also use the same framework in order for us to identify the learning needs of a student other than their target needs. We have here a similar checklist used for target situation analysis. This is a sample framework for analyzing learning process. First question is, why are the learners taking the course? Is it compulsory or is it optional? Is it apparent need or not an urgent need? Are statuses or money promotion involved? Is it for their job or just for their personal mastery of the language? What do learners think they will achieve? Will they achieve recognition, certificate, um, qualification? What is their attitude toward ESP course? Do they want to improve their English or do they resent the time they have to spend on it? So we need to assess their behavior 
in taking ESP as a course. The second item is how do the learners learn? Uh, we have here what is their learning background? Uh, for example, we have um, scores of their English proficiency exams. We can definitely use those to check or assess or perform a pre-assessment to gauge the existing knowledge of the learners. We also have what is their concept of teaching and learning. So how, how they learn, what are their practices in learning, what methodology will appeal to them. So this is concerning our techniques, our teaching approaches. Then what sorts of techniques are likely to bore or alienate, alienate them? Of course, if we identify those um, techniques that might bore or make our course dull, we have to eliminate and uh, change it to a different approach. Then third is what three course are available? These are the number and professional competence of teachers if they have effective and efficient instructors, attitude of teacher to ESP, if a teacher also encourages his or her learners to uh, learn English to attain their specific purpose. They're also considering the teacher's knowledge and attitude to the subject content, the materials, the aids, the opportunity of out-of-class activities, and the rest of the learning resources that a student can have so that they can still learn even after a class or after a meeting. The fourth thing that we should take note for analyzing learning process is knowing our learners, age brackets, gender preference, and social and cultural upbringing strongly affects what the learner needs. We should be able to know their background knowledge in English and other subjects. We should also uncover their interest, their attitude to English as a language and culture, and what teaching style they use or introduced before. The fifth thing that to take note is the physical learning center where ESP will take place. So for our last framework for analyzing learning process or analyzing learning means, number six question when, when will the ESP course take a place? So when, no? It has time of the day, just it's either every day or once a week, it's full time or in a part time or concurrent with need or pre need of the student. So English learned at elementary, junior and senior high school levels is uh, commonly called general English while English learned at the university level is called um, English for specific purposes which is ESP because it is taught in accordance with the field of science. So ESP itself aims to provide students with English that is important in their majors. No? The English learning is expected to provide students with competent, uh, competence in English language wherein concurrent with the learner's need or pre-need. No? This language is formally learned by applying curriculums at various levels of education consisting of elementary schools, junior high schools, senior high schools, and university. No? In a formal way, it is learned by attending English tutoring sessions or course provided by language institution. So to sum it up, English for a specific purpose requires need analysis. So with this, we can be able to know what people do with language. Is it to inform, to entertain, to persuade, or to just communicate? We should also know how are they going to use the language and why are they going to use the language. This is the very reason why need analysis is coexistent with the English for a specific purpose. For our quiz... To access the quiz, it is in via Google form by scanning the QR code or through the link below. So this concludes our presentation. I hope you learned a lot in terms of needs analysis in relation to English for specific purposes as a course. And I hope you'll get high scores in our quiz. Thank you for listening and thank you for participating.